oh, I love this paper because, you know, abstract meaning representation is a good trade-off between the world of Noam Chomsky, I mean, syntax and all things, and the world of computational uh, cognitive linguists, that is, semantics. So it's a good com mixture of them, and uh, you can... Although they, although people say that it is it is just good for English, but I think that it is also good for Persian language, because it's very sim Persian language is very similar to English. And uh, so it can also be used for that, but we want to take advantage of graph path learning using AMR, for something more important, which is common sense reasoning. And you can also use common sense reasoning for something more important, such as argument, mining, and so I want to explain this article from Korea University, an excellent article uh, for application of abstract meaning because we want we want to extend our amr graph to cover the concepts of a concept net so the problem is that the common sense question answering is a task in which a correct answer is predicted through common sense reasoning with predefined knowledge but most previous works have aimed to improve the performance with distributed representation without considering the process of predicting the answer from semantic representation of the question. So what is the solution? To shed light upon the semantic interpretation of the question, they propose AMR concept net prune graft. The ACP graph is pruned from a fully integrated graph encompassing AMR from input questions and an external knowledge base. So they, they use concept net. So common sense reasoning is beautiful. For example, a blowfish requires what specific things to live. We first should know that fish lives in the water, and then water includes seas and river, and then we understand that blowfish lives in the sea. So this chain of common sense reasoning is naturally deduced by humans without substantial difficulty. So this is an example of AMR and concept net graphs of questions. For example, when we say blowfish requires, so blowfish is the subject, so it is arc, it has arc zero relation. Oh, what a specific thing. So the rest of that, uh, so there is something, there is a subgraph here. And we also know that we can use the concept net and just find the blowfish. Blowfish is here. And see how it is related to other things. For example, it is related to fish or or it is at location fish market, which is of course not relevant, C is not relevant to your answer. So we want to know which pass is naturally going to the fish and we maximize the like likelihood of that probability that goes to the true answer. So AMR is a graph for meaning representation that symbolizes the meaning of sentences. And AMR illustrates who is doing what to whom. And it has arg0, arg1, and some arg, and then something that are non-arg. 
So I think AMR is much more general than semantic role labeling because semantic role labeling is very naive in comparison to the power of AMR. So that's why I like AMR because it's a combination of uh, syntactic representation and semantic stuff and you you get everything from that uh, among all, all formalisms is more natural is more uh, it is in harmony with what cognitive linguistics uh, teach in the university and what they do what they research it is in harmony with that as well and it is also interesting and important because you can use it for, for example, summarization. You 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 just prune the sub uh, the part of the subgraph that is not relevant or not important to what we want to either abstractive or extractive summarization. Both of them are are, are good. So AMR is really important for the future of artificial intelligence, and those GPT-4 and those things should should leverage AMR in future in order to reduce their very annoying hallucination. Uh, I used to go to this site, poe.com, and when I ask something, try to see the logical and reasoning power of those chat GPT, I, I, I realized that uh, it, is, it is just hallucination. It doesn't produce anything. So it's good for syntactic stuff, but it lacks semantic stuff. So that's why AMR, if we combine AMR with those uh, language models, we will have a better commercial products. So AMR alone is not enough. We know that. So we expand AMR with ConceptNet. So knowledge graphs are, are great. So we can, for example, for common sense reasoning, there are something that is not written in all text because human, everybody knows that by default. So we need something that uh, it is not is not explicitly written in text and documents and we can we can discover it by using ConceptNet. So what are the contributions of this beautiful paper? They introduce a new graph structure. They, produce, they propose a graph path reasoning framework. And so first we, we have AMR graph. You can do it with uh, an article that I've explained in my playlist for semantic parsing. I mean, part 20 of my playlist is uh, sequence to graph transduction. And so now that we have used that algorithm, you have that AMR graph. So if we combine the concept net, we, we have something that we call AMR CN. CN stands for concept net. And then we go and find a past relation encoder and we compute relational attention score for each node. And finally, we use the transformer to have a graph vector we concatenated with what we know from the, the, this language model. We concatenate it and then it goes, uh, so uh, softmax gives, gives us the probabilities. So we first generate AMR, as I said, with that um, article from John Hopkins University, I guess, or any, any algorithm that you like. And after that, and integrate all nodes of AMR with ConceptNet. The graph path learning module takes the prone graph as an input and computes the attention score of each path by using graph transformer, which results in the whole graph vector. The graph vector is finally fed into transformer to model interactions between the AMR and ConceptNet graph. 
and transforms to final graph representation. Meanwhile, the question and candidate answer from the data set are passed through language model encoder, producing language vector, I mean that concatenated vector that I've shown here. We concatenate these two worlds to have an enriched world. So the concatenation of language and graph vectors turns out to be the final representation that is used to predict the correct answer. So this is the reasoning path. For example, what home entertainment equipment requires cable? And the answer could be either Radio Shack, either substation, either cabinet or television or desk. And you, you, you do some scoring. So you can either use the full graph or just the, the pruned one, which is much more, which is much better. So how do we generate AMR? As I said, you can use the article. I like this article very much because it's very simple and natural because first you use a sequence to sequence model to find the concepts and then use the biafine attention of Professor Christopher Manning in Stanford to know what is the score of each of these, just like dependency bars. So it's very simple. You get the AMR graph very quickly. And then these are the relations that you subtract from from, so arg0 and arg1 are top two frequent relations because in most of sentences you just need the subject and object. So the ACP graph is defined like this and because some of them is for So we use language encoder, for example, which is pre-trained language model with a massive amount of corpus that is formalized. Just use CLS and then question and then separator and your candidate answer. So this is what you do in reading comprehension and everything, almost everything that involves uh, language models. So this is the graph path learning that the equation for the represented relation is we use gated recurrent unit, I mean forward and backward, and then you concatenate it and then multiply it by, by a parameter matrix, you get the relation encoding. And they can compute attention score as well. So if we use this, it becomes four terms, the first term, the second term, and it is explained here what they mean. So this is the overall proposed. We concatenated the language vector with the graph vector and the, you, you get the probabilities. And the data set that we use is common sense question answering data sets because it consists of 12,000 questions. And each question has five candidate answers. 